Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the Isuzu D-Max Highlander, which is the base variant of the D-Max lineup. By the way, this is not based on the global model. This is the older model which is being dished to us in India. Very bad Isuzu, very bad. Anyway, straight away we are going to be opening the engine bay, which means a little bit of acrobatics. But oh my goodness, this is so heavy. I can make my muscles. One, two. Okay, let it be. Anyways, you can see the engine bay is super duper clean. Obviously, it's a new and different engine. One point nine liter. 2.5 is out. I'm sorry about that. And there is insulation here. Big fat engine bay, very clean and nice. I like it, but no hydraulic struts, so I have to hold it, of course. So let's shut this and bang it down. Anyways, it's very basic, a car. It's so basic. It's so basic. I can't tell you. In fact, when I tell you the features which are not there, you'll be in a complete shock for a car which costs more than 23 lakh rupees. How can they miss out on so many things? Plain basic halogen light. This is for the indicator, which you can see here. Everything is halogen here. No fog lights, none of that. But they have given this sort of a grey treatment to the grille, and I don't know what exactly this is. But this is an additional thing which is on the front side, which is I think probably so that they can put a number plate, of course. And here you can see the underbody of the car. Well, there is the towing hook. That's kind of downwards, and I think there's sort of an engine guard as well, which is on metal. Anyways, there's not one. But there's another towing hook, so like plenty of towing hooks in this car, so you know what is the purpose of the vehicle, and then you can see a lot of stuff from here and there. Anyways, the Isuzu logo is right there. Now this is a very big car; it's huge in terms of size. And pardon that I've actually kept that open because honestly, I cannot open it with one hand. So you can see there's no side footstep, so climbing in can be a bit of an issue. And this is 5.3 meters long, which is huge. It's a very difficult car to drive. Rather, I should not call it car. I should call it a truck. And the wheels are really chain to minter, so it kind of looks hajib. And then obviously, this is in another territory because it's so huge. Let's look at the tire size. Now, the tire size happens to be two forty-five seventy sixteen. These are wheel caps, of course. And you know what? There's so much space between the body as well as the wheels. Rather, the tires, of course, because it's a SUV, pickup truck, whatever you want to call it for better rideability, ride quality. Says Highlander here. Indicators placed here as well. Mirror is actually big enough. This is the rain visor, which is an accessory. You can see the antenna. It's a bit weird. Thoda teda veda ho chuka hai. Pata nahi kyon aisa. And that's about it. <laughs> There's nothing to talk about in terms of design. It's so freaking basic. In fact, this hard lid is an option. It's not standard. And then you can get a canopy, which is something like this, which makes it a station wagon in terms of appearance. Now, first things first. I'm actually going to open this, which means I have to press this. I've already kept it open. So I'll just push it upwards. Okay, it has a sort of a spring mechanism, so it opens nicely. And then there's chrome here, which seems to be the only chrome on the outside. And now you can see it is huge. In fact, I think the official rated carrying capacity is somewhere around 250 kgs or something of that sort. But obviously, it can take a lot more as well. And then it is a bit of a task if I want to reach my suitcase because Faisal Khan's fingers of truth can never reach there. They're so far ahead. It's also badging there, and then it has this sort of a finishing, which makes it slightly easy. You can keep cups here. I don't know why you would want to do that. And then, of course, you can sit here as well, and then just enjoy the sunset, which is not happening at the moment. Meanwhile, I saw something here. There's a hook, maybe, to secure luggage because you really have to secure luggage because everything is going to move all around the place. And then there's some instructions here as well, and there's this thing to pull this. Just trying to make it easier for everybody, I believe. Now, is there a charging socket somewhere? I kind of think I saw something. I don't think it is there, but that would be a real nice touch because I could have a powered bed or something of that sort. But yeah, I kind of misread that. But there are hooks everywhere. Let's do one thing. Let's shut this, which means oh, first and foremost, you need to close this. Okay, this is very heavy. Makes this sound as well, and then you just push this down, and it shuts with smoothness. It doesn't make noise. It says this is so right there. It says DDI. And Isuzu D-Max rear parking sensors. What a revolutionary feature! But there is no reverse parking camera. By the way, Isuzu's brochure actually states that this car has a rear bumper. It's like saying that you know what? This car has a steering wheel. It has wheels. It has a dashboard. It has an engine. It has an exhaust. Wow, Isuzu! Wow. So I think because they have no features to offer, they have just written rear bumper in the brochure as a feature. Now let's look at the rear light. Halogen, halogen, halogen. Reverse light, indicator, brake light. So basic. But the paint finish is actually quite nice. I like it. And then there's a high-mounted stop lamp there on the top. Now, since this is the base variant, it doesn't really get anything as such. 
so we're going to get to the rear first and foremost doors open decently wide i'm not going to mention data ultros but yeah anyways so this is very useful because first and foremost i can actually put it down like this i honestly do not even understand the point of doing it because what can i do by putting it down okay obviously isofix child seat anchors are there okay let me put this back into place now this thing you can actually put up yeah and then you can secure it by i i think you have to mount it somewhere but yes this is another cool feature of this car that you can actually increase the storage capacity in the second row by putting it up like this yeah and there it falls okay you have to just secure it you just have to put that hook somewhere anyways good news is there is actually decent amount of space on offer good amount of legroom decent amount of knee room as well no scooped out seat back but they are magazine holders under thigh support is very poor headroom is very much adequate there's a hook as well as a handle and the seat belts actually get the height adjust function which is actually a commendable thing now there's a center armrest which doesn't have cup holders but the seat is a bit too upright so not really very comfortable but the window area is big enough and yeah it's all plastic everywhere this car is full of plastics you can see the dashboard design well that's extremely basic completely black and what do i even say i'm kind of baffled that a car costing this much money does not even get an audio system how is that even possible how did isuzu miss out on such an important thing but no you know what isuzu did they've given it four speakers yeah it has got four freaking speakers and the wiring but no head unit don't know the logic anyways cup holders are decent at the front at the rear also they are like decent enough not really big as such and the floor is kind of almost flat a little bit of hum there with isuzu on the matting by the way i forgot to show you there's a usb charging socket here this thing does not open it actually opens in the v cross to reveal two cup holders but yahan pe aisa kuch nahi hota that's again a big of, bit of a surprise seats are actually surprisingly comfortable sorry bagwat is just hung herself because after she saw the disappointment of the interior she like no i cannot take it anymore seats are actually quite comfortable i like it and this guy's got two freaking airbags rear parking sensors isofix child seat mounts well that's about it in terms of safety there's no traction control although it needs it because it's a rear wheel drive car of course this is how you adjust the seat height i believe yeah you can see this thing is going up and it has got six way adjust for the driver seat meanwhile you can see there's a proper dead pedal and the dead pedal comes courtesy of tata motors because you can see it that it has that tata motors thingy that design which tata motors has i think the obd connector goes right there this is to open the hood of the car this is to open the fuel lid and here you get a small storage space to hide your cigarettes from your wife this is the headlight leveler and it has some things written here for god knows what there's a dummy button right there and there is a cup holder so that you can cool your drink and to get inside you can just hold on to this and climb inside although you have to put side foot step it is an accessory but you need to do it for sure okay now let me just push the seat all the way behind you can see there's a i button which is actually to browse through the multi information display on the instrument cluster first things first listen to this okay what a third let's turn off the indicator now it gets air conditioning which can get quite noisy as such and there is a glove box on the top with a 12 volt charging socket okay there's a glove box below also which is decent in terms of size so plenty of storage in fact there is this cup holder there as well which is of course can be cool there is a mirror here oh my god this is so premium but there is no light same is the case here not exactly there's no mirror there is no auto dimming inside the rear view mirror unfortunately and the dashboard is full of hard plastics listen to this this is so cheap that this will break any moment lot of hard plastics like the level of cheapness inside this car absolutely baffles me how can there not be an audio system for a car at this price point just doesn't make sense there's some storage space here actually this is so that you can put a bigger audio system head unit of course okay air conditioning like i told you works well and there's a usb charging socket here and there's a usb right there and there's another 12 volt charging socket so yeah plenty of charging options and there's some storage space here as well twin cup holders right there this does not open what is there in the v cross guys come on guess handbrake easy to operate gear lever kind of vibrates to get into reverse you have to like push it and there it makes this sound to tell you yeah we have activated the rear parking sensors this does not move but below it there's some storage space where you can see the exposed screws of course and you can see this dummy button that's the engine start stop button i think you can turn off the parking sensors but you will be stupid enough to do that because once you do that you can't see where the rear is which is exactly 5 and 1/2 kilometers away and height adjustable steering wheel it's not uh, like can move it towards yourself so it's not reach adjustable as such this is a hazard light button there is some storage space here 
which is kind of cool. Now these are the controls for the wipers. Let's use the wipers right away. Yeah, I would say it sprays decent. Actually, wipers work nicely as well. And there's this eye button with which I can browse through add blue level. Okay, so this button with this left button I can go backwards, and with the right button I can go frontwards. So I'm just going to show you there are actually nine menus here. So first and foremost, in the first one you get the trip information. Trip A odometer. Trip B what is the average fuel efficiency? 13.6 kilometers per liter. Not bad at all. Instant fuel consumption and then average speed. What is the distance of travel? Elapsed time, distance, and all that stuff. And then it also tells you the range distance to empty, which is nice. And then the DPD level, which is basically the, I mean for the BS6 compliance, how much add blue I think add blue level. Yes, tells you the range for the add blue. And then you can select mode. What mode should I select? This is something which I think. It's just there by default. It's not there in this car because it's two-wheel drive, of course. And then you have the temperature meter as well as the fuel meter, a tachometer, and the speedometer. Then and telltale lights are placed almost every freaking where. Yeah, telltale lights are placed everywhere. Just look at this. थोड़ा clearly दिखा लेता हूँ मैं. Steering wheel feels basic to hold, and this is obviously the control for the lights and the like. Yeah, that's how we turn them on. An indicator as well. Pass by switch and. Things are very hard and rough inside this car. I expected a lot better from Isuzu at this price point. The horn, very meek, not exciting at all. Kind of basic. Now this is to lock or unlock the vehicle. It does not auto lock. This is for the child lock and auto roll down for the driver side, but it doesn't auto roll up and no other window actually rolls down automatically. Like you have to keep the button pressed, of course. And uh, yeah, there should be a handle here which is not there. Where is the mic placement? Why should why 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 should there be a mic placement? There is no audio system, Pascal darling. There is no audio system. Where will you get that mic placement? Anyways, let me do one thing. Let me just turn off the car, and it says see you. Well, not really, and it shows issues. When then it unlocks the car if it's locked. Now this is to unlock the car. This is to lock the car, and there's this another key. I think it's to lock the probably the lid at the rear. And when I actually turn on the car, it does this. It says welcome. Please fasten seat belt. It does a full swipe up as well, and then. it completely rose to life i like the way this whole thing has been done there's temperature inside and then there's also the time which is being shown so that's kind of cool but yes this car is very basic in terms of features i mean it doesn't have any features so i don't know what to say but is it worth the price is something we will find out by driving it because the engine seems very promising here yeah they have given speakers but you have to get your own head unit maybe i'll just plug my mobile phone here and then i don't know I, I I I how will I connect it to the speakers? Maybe I'll just get my own. That's what Isuzu wants at the end of the day. See, it's quite comfortable. Back with the. Are you feeling comfortable? I am dead. I'm disappointed that there is no audio system in this car. I want to listen to hip hop music. Oh God, I'm so sorry, back with the. Let's start driving right away. But before we go, let me show you this indicator here. And obviously, you can see the ground clearance is ample. Body on frame platform with leaf springs at the rear, so you can see the. frame of course and you can see the leaf springs for which i'll have to actually show you from here yeah those are leaf springs did i use the f word i'm sorry about that fast can fingers of truth will have to go all the way down for the exhaust which is kind of long which you can see i mean under body is again so interesting to see in a body on frame platform cars before all this disappear for mono cocks and uh, here you can see the spare wheel well it cannot be an alloy because a regular wheel is obviously not an alloy and there you can see the tire which seems to be a full sized one and then Yeah, that's about it. I think now it's time we should start driving. By the way, I forgot to tell you. I actually told you, but I gave you the wrong information earlier. Oh my God! Can I do it? Yeah, with one hand. 215 kg is the official loading capacity of this thing. Although you can obviously carry more, but then officially they say 215 kg. Well, that's kind of cool. And no matter how hard you shut it, it's not going to shut hard. It's going to be like. Smooth. All right, we're all set to go, which means turning on the car. Yeah, there's no clutch lock. There, it rose to life. Air conditioning off. And let me use the most revolutionary feature of this car: externally adjustable outside rear view mirrors. Yeah, that's right. They are not internally adjustable. You have to adjust it like this, which is a big bummer at this price point. That's kind of crazy. Any which ways, there's nothing to turn off traction control or anything of that sort. Handbrake down into first gear, revving the motor, revs all the way till 4,350 RPM, and off we go. And we already hit the red line. That is how crazy the gearing is. Any which way, the thing is that it's rear-wheel drive, so it had some amount of wheel spin. And you have to be a little slow here because it can bounce so much that it can bottom out on bad bumps. That's kind of an issue as well. Although ground clearance is ample, but this is just rear-wheel drive, which is kind of pointless. Anyway, onto the throttle, and I can pick it up in second gear very smoothly and nicely. And there you see. Nice pull, and then it's dead very soon, and it hits the red line also very fast. Red line comes in at around 4,300 RPM, but this engine is actually very much fun. 
and we have already reached 100 km per hour so i estimate this to go from 0 to 100 km per hour in just 13 and a half seconds by the way stop looking at that tree i know it's in the center it's obstructing me so i'm just going to turn around it obviously i can't go over it or under it or whatever anyways you can see ingen acceleration is actually quite nice and that's thanks to the fact that this engine is brilliant earlier they used to offer a 2.5 liter diesel engine now they have gone lower on displacement 1.9 liters is a displacement but I don't have to say no replacement for displacement because the power has increased by 10 horsepower the torque has increased by I think 30 newton meters something of that sort or maybe ulta ulta but you get the drift the result is this car produces 163 horsepower at 3600 rpm and the torque output is actually quite nice and considerable because it comes in between 2 to 2 and a half thousand rpm which is 360 newton meters the result is it's actually a very peppy car and not uh, the chips uh, peppy but yeah it's very nice low end performance is excellent turbo lag is well contained drivability is mind blowing here and the pull in the low end is super duper awesome in fact between 2 to 2 and 1000 rpm the engine really performs fantastically well so it's got a really nice low end half of the mid range is nice beyond that it's poor there's no top end there's no point pulling it beyond 2 and 1000 rpm because when you do the car doesn't really move as such so we're just going to come to a halt where you can see the brakes are not that inspiring and then obviously a lot of nose dive as well into first gear has a light off revving the motor and off we go ha ha you hit the red line so fast it does like 30 km per hour in first in second it does 60 km per hour and it's a six speed gearbox it needs those extra speeds of course because it's like so short gear and the good the good news is that because obviously it has so much grunt in terms of torque you can go to higher gear at lower speeds in third gear it will almost not reach 100 km per hour it's hovering around 9 9.47 km per hour so it kind of falls short in that regard now power is increased by 13 horsepower torque by 10 newton meter so i kind of messed up and there the bumps oh can be felt yeah the ride could be better the hydraulic steering very cumbersome in fact into second and then the car rolls so much that once i was cornering i was in that field right there because there's so much body roll it's insane amount of body roll from this car well the thing is that handling is not good the ride is also not good so what is good exactly well the road presence and the ruggedness is good so yeah you push it like this and you don't know where you are going roly poly anyways gearbox is also not that great to operate so it's kind of notchy the clutch is also heavy so what is exactly happening what happened to japanese engineering well i'll tell you what has happened here this is a very raw car it has that character which is amazing of course and then you know the engine is a gem right here obviously it's not a high revving motor it's not fast revving either it doesn't have to be it will return a decent fuel efficiency also between 9 to 14 km per liter depending on your driving style this is a very heavy car it weighs 1835 kg yeah it's a heavy 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 car you know why the handling is not that great because body on frame platform obviously the roly poliness is there the lumpiness is there steering is not that great obviously it is not even straight so you know when i turn it right then it goes straight so the alignment is also gone right now but the weight the body roll it's just considerable that's the reason why it's not really a nice handling car and then it uses leaf springs which not only affects the handling but also the ride quality of this car so at low speeds it's good but as you increase the speed it gets bumpy 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 and it becomes very bumpy as such so that bumpiness is kind of uncomfortable and then you know what if you put some weight at the rear then only leaf springs work better but here there's no weight so the leaf springs don't really work that well and the steering is kind of inconsistent although it's not heavy at high speeds but it is quite heavy and then this is a car which is a pain in your rear when you're driving it in the city because it's huge doesn't have a rear parking camera and not to forget <laughs> the steering is also heavy you can't really see what's around in fact at like right now when i'm looking in the rear view mirror i realize that boot or whatever you want to call it i don't know what you call that extra body luggage bed or whatever it is right now in noida and i am in gurgaon that is the length of that and that's a little bit difficult to manage as well so we're just going to come to a halt because that's the next best thing i can do is just stop and just soak in the dust let's go hazard light off into first gear oh such a notchy gearbox and off we go Oh my god you can't drive in first it just hits the red line so fast you can't drive in second it hits the red line so fast okay you can drive in third third is actually very nice very tractable as well now there are four variants on offer the highlander is like the base and then the v cross comes with three variants and the price difference between this base and the next 
variant happens to be 3.8 lakhs so if you don't want all this basic stuff maybe you should opt for the higher variant by paying 3.8 lakhs more but then you realize main khud ka audio system laga dunga mujhe 3.8 lakhs to lagenge nahi but then lot of stuff is missing in this car so it's better off you get a higher variant or get the v cross now the price difference between this and the top end v cross happens to be rupees 8 lakhs yeah that's considerable price difference because the top end obviously cost 31.15 lakhs this one cost 23.12 lakhs all the prices are of course on road mumbai here so yeah very pricey for what it offers because it comes with rear wheel drive it doesn't come with four wheel drive so i'm not even understanding who's actually going to be buying this car okay enthusiasts are not going to buy it because they can't take it off road a rear wheel drive actually limits how much you can take it off road because yeah it has the ruggedness it has uh, what i say the presence the ground clearance all that is there but it doesn't have four wheel drive which means that you need a four wheel drive vehicle so it's not really an a hardcore off roader in that sense does that mean that this is not a lifestyle vehicle it is but then you have to spend so much money to make it look like a lifestyle vehicle and obviously isuzu offers you a lot of customization options as well like to the moon and back but is it for business owners who are going to buy this car and haul a lot of luggage again for this price it doesn't make sense because for this price they're like i can get maybe two or three or two and a half bolero camper pickup trucks and all that stuff because why would a business owner want to buy an isuzu d max when they can get a bolero which is much cheaper and talking about the bolero there it is right in front but yeah i don't like it so i'm just going to take a u turn straight away and then you know you can feel that every bit of movement in this car but it has the road presence and that's what really matters get on the throttle no traction control nothing's going to happen because the power is delivered in a such a subtle and linear way now it doesn't push you back in the seat like ever and like i was telling you there are four variants on offer so there are two manuals and two automatics and out of those four obviously two happen to be for the all wheel drive and two are for the rear wheel drive so that's how the variant lineup is but it's become very expensive in fact they have increased the prices considerably with bs6 by around 3 3 and a half lakhs the price of prices have gone up of the isuzu d max which doesn't make sense because this car doesn't make any financial sense it doesn't even make any i don't know if you think from your heart also you realize maybe i should get the higher variants of the v cross which obviously happens to be good but then we are getting the pre facelift like the not the updated model which is sold globally so there we have been short change as well and then the hilux is going to be coming so so this seems to be like a soup of sorts which i'm not able to understand where exactly is isuzu heading with all this and uh, that's kind of weird some do you see that person just collapsed in between the road and into first holy cow look at that did you see that thar why are everyone running on 50 inch wheels in their thars what's the point So if I have to sum it up, I would say this car doesn't make much sense unless and until you want something which is extremely reliable. But there also I have a lot of things to counter because I've heard from a lot of Isuzu owners that reliability is not as Japanese level as you would expect. But then think of this car as a canvas. You buy it and then you just customize it the way you want to make it different. I mean to differentiate it from everything else on the road. And because obviously Isuzu has a very small sales outlet, rather the amount of dealerships. So that's another challenge. But that also means that this is going to be really exclusive. So even then, when you customize the car, it's going to really stand out because it has a road presence, it has a ruggedness, it has the feel of driving something which is like which requires some effort and you need some muscle to drive it because this is not an easy car to drive in any regard. Difficult to park, difficult. I, I mean, we've gone through it, but I'm not understanding why Isuzu is pricing their cars at such a premium that pricing could be a little bit more aggressive. And if that was the case, the uh, D Max would obviously sell in good numbers because that was the case when they initially launched. They really priced it so well, and then now they're pricing it at a premium. So that's a little bit of a disappointment as well. And turning radius is like to the moon and back. And yeah, you can pick it up very smoothly. I don't enjoy the gearbox as such because the clutch is also heavy. The gearbox is also not smooth shifting. And you know what? When you come here, push it a little hard, and you see what happens. Look at this. Yeah, it goes a little bit airborne as well. And on that. excitement or disappointment or whatever it's time to end thank you so much for watching by the way aris is monitoring the camera today he's smiling so much because he can see this tata safari he has a very cool 400 if you want him to give his car to me to break i mean to drive uh, to vlog on please comment isse ye bhi pata chal jayega kitne log end tak aate hain bye bye Is that